In this video, I'll show you how to make a tailored beret pattern. It's a classic design, a staple in millinery. It can be made out of multiple fabrics and trimmed any way you want. And the techniques covered in this video will be translated into future videos for different hat styles. We begin with a basic head size plate, and there's going to be another video a description located below that talks about head size plates. In this case, I'm using a 22 and a half inch head size plate. You're going to start with a basic axis, and this is just two perpendicular lines intersecting somewhere in the middle of the paper. Uh, nothing remarkable. You need to create a perpendicular line. You can use a, um, a square like this, or you can use a tailor square, or anything that has a 90 degree angle on it. Continue the line across, and you want to make sure that it's very straight. It's important that this is very accurate because everything banks off of these two lines. Now we take our head size plate and we need to match it up against the grid, the, the axis lines very accurately. So you'll see that I'm going to zoom in here. Uh, you can see that uh, the side of the plate is on the horizontal line and that the center front center back line is exactly on the vertical line. Like I said, everything banks off of these lines. And so it's very important that we have as accurate a placement as possible. And now I'm tracing the line. And again, just trace along that outside edge. It's very easy because the head size plate is made of oak tag in this case, and it's, uh, it's a bit more of a ridge to work off of. Okay, once you remove it, you can see that we now just have the traced line on here, and this will allow us to start making our pattern. Now label the long ends center front and center back, and label the side short ends side. And this will be representative of the way the hat uh, rests on the head, although you can wear a hat any way you want. Now, really, I'm doing the whole thing so you can see it, but ultimately, we'll just be using half of this pattern. The measurement you use to the outside of this line is completely arbitrary. Um, I chose two and a half just because I think it looks nice. You can use anywhere from about one and a half to like three and a half inches, but the further out you go from the head size line, the bigger the beret will be. Uh, I think two and a half really looks nice and um, more modern, yet at the same time still classic. So you make a mark. Now this is a little strip of oak tag that I've just cut that's longer than I need, and this is going to be our compass in just a second. So you measure from the intersection of the axis to your mark, and in my case it ended up being, I believe, five and seven eighths inches. And so Five and seven eighths becomes my measurement from the intersection of the axis all the way to my two and a half inch mark outside the head size line. So for this, you're going to draw a straight line on the oak tag. And this is just a random strip of oak tag, no big deal. Now, on one end, uh, close to the end, you're just going to poke a hole with a push pin. And this is going to allow you to put it right at the center of the intersection. See, so you want it right on the line, exactly in the center of the line. Now, from that hole, what you're going to do is measure the distance from the intersection of the axis to the outside of the measurement that you made outside the head size line. So, in my case, it's 5 and 7 eighths. Measure from the first hole you made the exact measurement, again, 5 and 7 eighths for me. And you're going to make a mark on the little line, and then you're going to do the same thing you did before by punching a hole in it with a push pin. And what this will allow us to do is create a sort of makeshift compass. That way we don't have to rely on an actual extra piece of equipment. Uh, it's really simple, and then if you know, you can just throw it away afterwards or recycle it. And so you see the hole on the other side. Now, put the push pin in the very first hole that you had, and you're going to put it exactly at the intersection of the axis you originally drew. 
I'm going to hold it because my mat didn't want to push it in. Now you're going to put your pencil or your, in this case I'm using a, a, a very fine permanent marker, in the hole and you're just going to complete the circle. Now like I said, in this pattern we're only going to be using half of this pattern. So if you wanted to you could draw the whole circle and you can just save, we're going to cut this away in just a second, you can save the other half of the pattern for another draft. Now you'll notice that the circle is a little bit wider on the sides and that's fine because we're drawing this circle off of an oval and of course it's going to be a bit more narrow on the longer ends. But that's fine, that's the shape of the beret, that's what it traditionally looks like. Now you're just going to cut the pattern directly on that vertical axis line. You're going to save or discard the other half of the pattern piece. And now you're just going to cut on the outside line that we just drew, which is that circle. Now uh, we need to transfer these uh, placement names to the actual pattern piece because uh, we're going to discard the head size line in just a second. So the long horizontal line gets side and the short vertical lines get center front, center back. Now we separate the head size plate shape from the pattern piece. So you just cut along that line, exactly on that line. We now have a section we can manipulate. So the first thing we're going to have to do is fold this in half. And because we're making something that fits a specific measurement, in this case 22 and a half, we need to make sure that that head size line never changes size. So once we fold it in half, we're going to fold it in half again. And you're going to match it exactly on that edge point on the head size line. And ignore everything that's happening below it or on the opposite side. You want to make sure that point is exactly folded to that point because we don't want to change the size of the head size measurement. And then make sure you crease it really well with your fingers or use your scissors or something to um, the handle of your scissors um, to make sure it's nice and folded because these lines are very important. And again, you're going to fold it one more time. And in this case, exactly to that point, just as before. Fold it and crease it. See how the other paper is hanging out below? Ignore that. It doesn't matter. We're just looking exactly at that head size line. And then you get this sort of wonky accordion shape. Now, for this video, what I'm going to do is darken in these lines. Now, if you're comfortable just looking at the actual folded lines, you don't have to do this step, but it's easier for you guys to see what I'm doing with the darkened in lines. So I'm just going to put two little dots on each end of each of the fold lines and then use a straight edge to connect the dots. It'll just make it easier to see each individual section. Now that each section has been uh, marked by darkening in the lines, uh, we need to determine how much we're going to take out of the outside edge. And you can take out as much as you want, but I don't recommend anything more than half an inch, because at that point you're going to straighten it so much that it's going to change the shape, and there are easier ways to draft it if you're going to do a straighter side. So for this example, I'm using 3 eighths of an inch. So from that darkened in line, your fold line, you're just going to mark out three-eighths of an inch. And you're going to do this on each section. Now, on the fold lines at center front and center back, we have kind of a special issue because they're basically the same section, just sort of without an opposite side. So we don't actually do a whole measurement there. Normally you do a whole 3 eighths on every section, but in this case, we need to only do half of the section. 
and I don't want to do the math on three eighths of an inch. So what I do is I mark out three eighths of an inch on a little scrap of paper and I cut that little section out and I'm going to fold that in half and that will automatically tell me exactly how much three eighths, half of three eighths of an inch is. I had a student one time call this functional math. So you just fold the little piece of scrap paper in half and you immediately get exactly half of three eighths of an inch, which is exactly what we need. Now you're gonna take this measurement off from the center front center back line on both sides um, from the outside shape because again, we don't want to affect the head size measurement. And what I'm gonna do next is I'm actually gonna write head size um, on the top here, that way you guys can see exactly which shape you do not want to mess with the measurement. Now all I'm going to do is draw a line from zero at the head size line, you can see I'm writing at zero up there because we want it exactly on that point, to the mark I made which is half of three-eighths of an inch. And I'm going to do it on the other side as well. Again, we do not want to change the measurement at the head size line. And now because we're done with these, we can go ahead and just cut them off. Exactly on that line, not changing the head size line, we're just taking off that half measurement on the outside edge. Now what we need to do is get rid of those 3 8 inch increments along the outside edge. You're going to cut two not through the head size line. And so you'll have like a little bitty fulcrum up there that allows you to sort of manipulate this. Now the next thing you're going to do is you're going to overlap one side, the fold line, towards the 3 8 inch mark. And you're going to tape that down. And when you do this, you're actually going to decrease the measurement on the outside shape, not the head size line. That's why we cut two not through the head size line. Once you do each section, you will see how much you've decreased the outer measurement. And on the back, you can just see the little triangles easier. Now what we need to do is we need to fold this in half one more time. And this will give us our new side seam. You don't want to do this, um, you don't want to follow the original line. You want to make sure you have a brand new folded line because it is a, it's slightly off by 3 8 actually. So what you want to do is you want to fold this again on the head size line, really crease it in, and then I'm going to draw in that new side seam uh, line that allows me to then manipulate the pat pattern further uh, later on. Now on this step, what we need to do is we need to get the measurement of that outside line. And to do this, I'm going to just tape it down. And the only reason I'm doing this is so it doesn't slide around on me when I try to use the ruler. Now I'm taking my uh, view through ruler and I'm bending it on its edge to get this measurement. And you see that I stop and I start to get all the way around the curve. And for me, my measurement ended up being 15 and a half inches. Now I have to multiply that number by two in order to get a full circumference, which in my case ends up being 31 inches. Now we have to do some basic geometry here. 
We're looking for the diameter, which is circumference divided by pi. Now for us, 3.14 will work. Now, we know my measurement is 31 inches because that was 15 and a half times 2. And this circumference will allow us to draft the tip of the beret. So 31 divided by 3.14 comes out to 9.873. Now, in order to draft the circle, we need a radius. And radius is just diameter divided by 2. So in this case, 9.873 divided by 2. And that gives us a measurement of 4.937. Now I have another video that goes into drawing circles more um, specifically, so I will have that linked below in the description. But um, the measurement I'm going with is 15 16 because it matches mine as close as possible without going over. When in doubt, you want to use the lower number. On a new sheet of paper, draw a new axis, just like before. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw out a measurement that is 4 and 15 16 on the axis. And then I'm going to do the same thing on my little compass. I'm just going to mark out 4 and 15 16 from that circle uh, hole that goes at the intersection of the axis. And I'm going to poke a hole in the um, measurement I just made. Now I make a little check mark to make sure that's the one I'm going to be using. And once again, push pin at the intersection of the axis. And we are going to continue to draw our circle using our little makeshift compass here. Now, if you have an actual compass, you're more than welcome to use it, but this is just a quick way to do it, and um, it doesn't involve any extra equipment. So for this, you're going to draw the entire circle. And what this drafts is the tip of the beret, which is the very top pattern piece of the beret. And once we've determined our uh, crown shape, which is the sort of melon shape we just did, this allows us to create the, the top of the beret. Now, from here, I'm making a little a measurement at 3 eighths of an inch because I'm using 3 eighths of an inch as my seam allowance. If you want to use a half inch, if you want to use 5 eighths of an inch, it doesn't matter. I'm just using 3 eighths of an inch, and that's what I'm using. So I'm going to make another little hole in this at 3 eighths of an inch and go ahead and draw in the seam allowance for this while I'm here. Rather than having to do it later with the ruler, I can just kill two birds with one stone and uh, draw my circle and my seam allowance in one step. Next, I just want to double check everything and make sure I'm where I need to be. So I'm going to measure the first circle I drew, not the seam allowance circle, the first circle. And I need to make sure that it's somewhere in the vicinity of the measurement I needed, which was 31 inches for my full circle circumference. In this case, when I measure, I end up getting a measurement of 15 and 5 eighths. Now when I multiply that by 2, I get 31.25, which is well within the limits of the measurement I need, and I talk about that in my circle video. Next, I'm just going to mark these points. So center front and center back. And each of these gets a side. It doesn't matter which ones get which. They're all equal quadrants. I'm also marking the center hole in case you want to put like a pom-pom or a stalk or something there. I'm using a contrast color here to mark where the notches go. These are very important in the construction of this thing. Um, so we need to make sure that we mark these very vividly. Now, I don't want seams at center front and center back. I would rather have my seam at the side when I construct this thing. So what I'm going to do is separate this piece 
exactly on the side seam. And you see that there's two straight lines at center front and center back that in pattern making, we know that two straight lines of the same measurement can be connected as long as they make sense in the context of the pattern. So all I'm doing is, again, I'm not changing the head size measurement at all. All I'm doing is cutting on the side seam, and I'm going to join center front and center back together. And what this does is it melds that seam. So it tells me that that no longer has a constructed seam, it's just one piece. And my actual construction seam is on the side now. Now, if you want to leave the seam at center front and center back, you're more than welcome to. I just think it looks more professional if you move it towards the side seam. Now, I want to make a cleaner, neater pattern piece. So what I'm going to do is just tape this down with some masking tape to my work surface. And that's just to help prevent it from sliding around. I'm now going to take a clean sheet of paper and place it on top. And the butcher paper works well for this because you can see directly through it. So does traditional dot-to-dot -dot pattern making paper. Not craft paper. That thick, um, sort of dark brown craft paper won't work for this because you can't see through it. So I'm just going to tape this down as well, just so it doesn't slide around. And now what I need to do is very neatly trace this pattern. And if you can even use, uh, you can even use tracing paper if you have it. So for this, I'm just going to make two little marks uh, at each end of each of the straight lines, in this case the side seams, and I'm just going to connect them with a straight edge. After you've drawn your side seams with a straight edge, you need to start tracing out the curves. Um, you can start with the head size line or the outer edge, it's up to you. I use a little dashed line here because I think it's more understandable for people who have never made patterns before. Uh, but if you're comfortable using curved rulers, you're more than welcome to complete this in one stroke. Now all I'm doing is just tracing out that line exactly as it is um, underneath on the pattern piece. And you can see it here in just a second. It's just a dashed line, nothing more remarkable than that, and I'm just doing both edges. Now mark your center front, center back line. Again, two dots and connect the dots. And you're going to label this so you don't forget where it is. You're also going to label your two side seams. Now we're going to add seam allowance. And again, I said my seam allowance was 3 eighths of an inch. So I'm just going to go ahead and measure out 3 eighths of an inch from that straight line on the side and mark my seam allowance. And I'm going to use a consistent seam allowance on these pattern pieces because, well, more complicated patterns would use different seam allowances in different parts, but for this, it, we're going to keep it as consistent as possible. Same thing here, following that curve, but you want to make sure at the very beginning of that curve, you have a nice 90 degree angle to the side seam seam allowance. And you're going to continue marking that 3 eighths of an inch or whatever measurement you chose for your seam allowance all the way around. You're going to do the head size line and you're going to do the outside line. And again, at the very beginning, you want to make sure you have a nice clean 90 degree angle when you first start out. Then continue along the curve, keeping it consistent at 3 eighths of an inch. And here you see the completed pattern piece drawn with all the seam allowance. Cut this pattern piece out on the outside edge that you just drew. And there's your completed piece. Now, just like the tip, we're going to go ahead and mark our notches on here as well. We need them at the center front, center back line. And we also need to indicate that two separate fabric pieces need to sew together on the side seam. So fold it in half, not a heavy crease, just get those two edges to match. And I put a little marker and I make sure it bleeds through to the other side. And you can see that now that you can mark both of those and they'll be in the exact same spot when you notch it.
Now we need to label these pattern pieces. So this is going to be the beret tip because the tip is the topmost part of the, of the hat. This is going to be the beret crown. The crown is the piece that leads into the tip. Now, as far as what fabric we need to cut, you're going to cut of the crown, you're going to cut two of your fashion fabric. This is what you'll see on the outside of the beret. You're also going to cut two of lining. And if the fabric that you're choosing is lightweight, you'll need to cut two of interfacing or underlining if you're using it. Now, for the tip, you only need to cut one of the fashion fabric, one of the lining, and one of interfacing or underlining if necessary. This tool is called a notcher. It does one thing. It makes little notches in paper patterns. It's not for fabric. Um, it's only for paper, and it just makes a little U-shape indention that makes it easier to mark things on the fabric later on with a pencil or chalk. This is a screw punch and a, a baseboard for it. You put this underneath, and you can make a perfect hole, in this case for a stalk or a pom-pom. Um, and there you have it. Two clean pattern pieces. The last pattern piece we need to make is for the headband. And this is very simple. All you do is just draw a straight line. Now, this needs to be the measurement of your head size. In my case, 22 and a half inches. Uh, so I just typically make the line longer than I need to. And then I'll just cut it off when I need to cut it off. Uh, with, a, with a square, you're going to square up on one end, uh, a little bit longer than you need. Uh, ultimately, this is going to be two inches plus seam allowance. So I just make it a little bit longer than I need. And then I'm going to make, from that base line, I'm going to make a mark at, uh, I'll make a line at one inch. And this first one inch um, is going to be folded on another inch to create a clean headband on the inside of the beret. So from that first, that second line that you did, you're going to draw another line at one inch. And you will now have a two inch line with a fold line indicated in the middle. Now here, I'm measuring from that squared up line 18 inches because my ruler isn't long enough. So I need to get to 22 and a half inches. So 18, 19, 20, 21, 22 and a half. And I'm going to make a mark. Ignore that second little dot. That was a mistake I made earlier. So that mark right there is at 22 and one half inches. That's exactly what I need. Now, on the other end, I'm going to go ahead and start drawing my seam allowance. In this case, again, 3 eighths of an inch. That 3 eighths of an inch is going to get repeated on all sides of this long piece. Now on the opposite end, at the 22 and a half inch mark, I'm going to use my square and draw a square line from the bottom. And this is the end of the pattern piece. Now all I have to do is add 3 8 inch seam allowance to this end, and that completes the drafting of this piece. Now you're going to cut out this pattern piece. And then we're going to have to make some indication marks on it as well. Start by folding this in half. And what this is going to give us is a center front mark. And crease it well. And again, I just draw in the line so you guys can see what's happening. And I'm going to label this center front. Now, the two ends before the seam allowance, that is technically our center back seam. So, I need to find a midway point between center back and center front. So I need to match those two lines, not the raw edge of the paper. We want to make sure that these two lines come together, and that's where you fold. 
This fold later indicates the side seam. So what we're going to do is both edges, bring it together, make sure those lines are matching, not the raw edge of the paper. And now we're going to do the same thing we did before by indicating notches. We want to notch those two folds, we want to notch the center fold, and this will complete this pattern piece. The last thing we need to do is just give ourselves some indicators. So in this case, I'm going to mark side on each of these. And we need to label this pattern piece for use. So here, we're going to call this the beret band. And for this, we're only going to cut one of your fabric. If it's a lightweight fabric, you can also do interfacing. And that's it. That completes the drafting of your basic tailored beret pattern. In a future video, I'll cover the construction of the beret. Thank you for watching.